<laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I want to share with you the new makeup that I got this week. I'm super excited to try all of it. Um, I'm testing out a new foundation and stuff and other things like they're not super brand new but they're new to me and I just wanted, I couldn't wait to play with it. So I wanted to play with it with you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. I went to Ulta. I grabbed a few things, quite a few things. Even though I don't need any more like beauty blenders, not, not an actual beauty blender, but like beauty sponges, um, I saw Eco Tools came out with a new shade of theirs. So I had to get these, I love these, they're amazing. The other thing that I got is the mini They're Real from Benefit. I also got the Essence Lash Princess, and then I picked up a few of the LA Girl neon eyeliners. They have these little kits at uh, um, Ulta and so I decided I'll give it a go. And then I've also, like not that I need any more brow gel, but the Tarte Double Duty brow, uh, Busy Gal Busy Gal Brows. They also had their 4-in-1 press powder and the ladies said that it was amazing so I picked that up and it was on sale so... I'm super excited to try that. Um, so that's my Ulta stuff. But the few things, I did get two things and a sample from Sephora that we're going to test out. So like, Ta I've seen Tati use these eyelash curlers. So I bought those because I've actually pinched my eyes on traditional eyelash curlers. So I was hoping like this won't do it. Like it's generally like my outer corner that I end up pinching. So I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. And then... I got Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. Isn't that... I love the packaging. Like, it matches my shirt today. But, like... Come on. How, how can you not admit that that is stunning? Right? So, I'm super excited about this one. And the last but not least from Sephora is I got a sample of the Hourglass um, Vanish Foundation. So I'm going to try uh, Allie Glines Technique. She, so I bought the Real Techniques Expert Face um, brush. It's a new packaging. It's usually golden or orange and black, but the only one that they had was the rose gold one. I'm going to use this for foundation and then go in and try patting it out with a, a beauty sponge and see if that works. Um, to make it look prettier. But first I'm going to prime my face with the No Pore Blum Prime Essence from Touch and Soul. So I'm gonna just put this all over the face. It does help with the pores and everything, but because I have this and all of this crap going on, and like my pores are really big on my chin. I'm also gonna put a little bit of the smoothing co pore covering, no pore blum primer on those little spots on my face just to give an added blurring effect. My nose, especially here, and on my chin, just smush it all in. Okay, so then I'm going to take the foundation and I'm just going to use, like, literally take my finger. So, like, there will obviously be no pumps, but I'm just going to take my finger in the cap little area and just take whatever's there and start lightly dotting it on my face. And just take a little bit more. Do, do, do. Um, so, does anybody have, like, Sephora, Ulta, like, horror stories? Because when I was going to get this, there's a girl that works at one of the Sephoras here. And the last time I had went into Sephora, she'd asked for something for a bag, if I wanted a bag. And I don't know how anybody else is, but for me... If I get a bag at any store, or even like a basket at a gro like any type of store, like Target, Walmart, if I end up with a basket or a bag, <sighs> I end up spending way too much money. So I always, for myself, just as a rule of thumb, don't 
get a bag at Ulta or Sephora because if I if I have to put more than I can carry in my hands, oh my god, my bank account would probably shrivel up and die. Okay? I'm just totally truthful there. Like it would be a disaster. So I guess one of their policies is is that if you if they offer you a bag and you decline, they're supposed to watch you like a little bit more to make sure that you don't end up stealing stuff. Now, totally understand that. Like, they don't want stuff stolen and all that. But here's where my problem came in. So, <clears throat> so she offered me the bag. I said no. And then I take, like, two steps away. I'm not even, like, five feet away from her. Like, two steps... And I hear her in their little headpieces that they wear say, she didn't take a bag, watch out for the girl in the white shirt and short haircut. Um, excuse me? Like, the common decency for me would have been at least walk away so that I don't hear that. But also, like, you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. I was like, I'm, I'm a Rouge member. Like... I've already spent over a thousand dollars in your store this year, so excuse me, but um, why would I steal now? Like, I've already spent the money, why steal now? So, like, that rubbed me the wrong way, and like, I refused to go back to Sephora for like months after that. It's been like five months, I think, um, until I saw the Natasha Denona palette, and then I was like, oh, I want to go in. So I could get it. Because, um, like, as, as much as I like ordering online, I hate waiting for it. So, like, if I could go drive and get it and it be in my hands that very same day, I would prefer that. So, like, it was just, it rubbed me the wrong way. Like, I get their store policies and all that stuff. Like, they have to do certain things. But, like, who, who does that? Like, who makes sure that the person that they're want to watch can hear that that's what you want I'm adding just a little bit more um you know what I mean like the, to me that was like really rude and so when I went to go get this and get it shade matched because I wanted you know cause it's a very expensive foundation so if like eventually I do buy it I want to know what my perfect shade is I don't want to um you know buy it and then get it in the wrong shade and either have to return it or just live with my purchase right like that always sucks um so when I went, I went to that Sephora again, and so I called over a different lady to help me, and so she called over the same girl that did it to me, that whole shoplifting thing, and I was like, God darn it, like, and I looked at her and I go, oh, that girl really doesn't like me, and mind you, I had already been in the store for like 10, 15 minutes at this point, and I had been wandering around, and she, this lady that she pointed to me to help me, the girl that like, has an attitude issue, like, she saw me, and she never once asked me if I needed help, like, she just walked past me, like, five times, so, like, I looked at the lady who pulled this girl aside, and I was, like, um, last time I was here, she wasn't very helpful, and she was kind of rude, and she looks at me, and she goes, oh, yeah, we're working on her, we're working on that with her, I was, like, oh, my god, like, that's not, like, super good, okay, so, let's see, oh, sorry, um, I really like the, the finish of it. Um, I'm sure if I built it up more, it'd, like, give me more coverage. But, like, I don't want to... Since I'm dealing with this little spot here and here, I don't want to, like, overdo it and take it up. But it looks really good. But I'm just going to smooth it out just a... Even with the brush. The brush worked amazing. I don't know why I hadn't picked that up sooner. Probably because I have about 1,500 brushes and, no, not 1,500, but I have over, like, 200 brushes, and I'm sure my husband's like, like, you needed any more, Katie? Like, of course I needed more. <laughs> this is me we're talking about. Anyway, so I'm going to conceal with the Urban Decay Naked Skin. I'm really into using this again. Like, I die hard shave tape fan. Like, that was, as soon as I got that, like, most concealers just fell off the map for me, but... I picked this up again, and I'm so glad that I did. Like, it's not... It is definitely... 
It's not super full coverage, but it definitely gives the coverage. It's definitely there. Like, you can't deny that there's coverage. It's just, it's not super full coverage. But I like it. I like that it's a little bit dewy. Not so mattifying. Especially, like, now because it's summertime. And, um... I have, like, normal to dry skin, so, like, my skin isn't super dry, but, like, if I don't drink water, or if I don't drink enough water, holy crap, my face feels it, so, so it's just nice to have a lightweight concealer and not one that feels like you've got a ton on. So I'm gonna set my face with the pure, so, like, this is a foundation, so it's gonna give me more coverage, which is cool while setting my face. And I'm just gonna take um, a duo fiber brush. Duo fiber brush. Every time I say that, I say fibro, like fibromyalgia, and that's like not the case. <laughs> I don't know what it is with saying duo that makes me have to say fibro, and it's fiber. Another like story time. So like, the girl who recommended this to me um, is the same girl that ruined my makeup when I went to Ulta, like, two years ago, <laughs> which is so funny, because I, I was, like, slightly skeptical of her, I was like, oh, you're the girl that I had a really good, I had a really good makeup day going on, and then she was like, oh, you need to try this, and I was like, okay, so she, like, totally screwed up my makeup, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I trust you now, but let's see. I really like that. And I like using, I've been really enjoying using a duo fiber brush for like setting my powder and everything because like it just puts enough. Like I don't feel like I'm caking it on. Like it might look like I am, but obviously I'm not. So it just, it feels good. Like, and then it leaves my face with not like it's not super tacky but it gives it enough to where it still feels like my skin I'm gonna whew, just gonna add some setting spray right now just to let everything like kind of melt together real quick <laughs> oh seriously oh that may have just ruined it holy crap that spray is deadly like it spurts like big chunks it smells really good but it's the Skin & Co. Truffle Therapy uh, that I got in my BoxyCharm, which I did do an unboxing on that. If you want to see it, I can link it. But holy cow. I, I, do not, I did not like that spray. So I'm going to bronze and contour with my Park Avenue Princess palette. I'm mixing Carrot and Princess Cut. That's how I roll. One's cooler tone, one's warm tone, so I think it just gives me the perfect, the perfect mix. The perfect mix. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm, hmm, I'm not crazy, <laughs> but if you were to ask my husband, he'd tell you I am. <laughs> In the most loving way possible. So, alright. Um, let's see. My daughter turns four this month. I can't believe I have a four-year-old. I remember being pregnant with her, and I hated being pregnant. Who liked being pregnant? Can anybody tell me? Anybody actually like being pregnant? Because I hated it, like with a thousand suns. I'm gonna set my under eye with the white, or with the, not white, but the, Halo and Enhance in here. I like to mix them both because one's kind of yellow based and one's more pinky and that helps cancel out the dark circles. I finally picked up the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter in Molten Gold. So pretty. So, so pretty. I don't think it replaces the rose gold one for me. But whew, it's still so stunning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Highlighting my nose makes me so happy. It's not even like baby hairs, it's just hairs. I'm gonna use this Pretty Vulgar blush. Uh, it's another BoxyCharm item. <laughs> I love me my box. I love BoxyCharm. Like, I'm so glad that I subscribed to them instead of um, Ipsy. Like, I had both for a little while, but I canceled Ipsy because it was just like, not worth it anymore. BoxyCharm is so worth it. Alright, so I'm gonna play with this beautiful thing. Like, seriously my favorite thing ever. So I'm gonna go in with this this shade which is morning right here as my transition shade. Oh so pretty. Oh yes. So worth it you guys I swear. Like if you like warm tones and berry tones, this is amazing. I think there's literally like no brown shades in this palette. I didn't even realize that. And that's cool. Like, I don't mind that. Honestly, I don't. As long as the palette actually has transition shades. I do not care that it's not a brown transition shade. Blah, a brown transition shade. As long as there is a transition shade that I can use that's going to work for every color scheme that's in here and there is like the only like tr like these are the two they're both shimmers but like these are the two browniest shades and I appreciate that so much because so many times you get a palette like something like this and there won't be any type of transition shade or you get a palette like this and there's like five brown shades and even then there's not a transition shade. So I appreciate that this isn't like an all brown palette. Not that I don't love me some browns, let's be honest. Those are great for every day. But, you know, sometimes it's just like when companies are making palettes, I look at them and sometimes I'm looking like, what were you thinking? Like, were you not thinking about the fact that it would be easier if you had this shade in it? Like, and sometimes it's like a shade that, like they throw in a shade that completely doesn't go with anything. And it's like, why put that shade in? You could have given us a perfect like transition matte shade of any variety that goes with these colors, but you don't even give us that. And it's like, ugh, what are you thinking? Now, I probably sound like I'm going off on a tangent, and I'm probably sound crazy, but sometimes I just wonder what people are thinking. Next, I'm going to go in with Carnelian. Carnelian, I think is what it's called. And it's a like a orangey, it's like a neon orange, actually, to be honest. And I'm just going to go right below that and like directly into the crease. And just build it up a little bit. So oh, these are so it's so pretty. And in case you haven't guessed already, I'm gonna do something that basically matches my shirt. Now, who feels like you don't have to do that. And who feels like you should always kind of match your makeup to what you're wearing? Or at least make it look, or at least have it a makeup look that can go with anything. Because I'm both. Like, there's some days where I will match what I'm wearing. And then there's some days where I'm just like, whatever, I'm going to do this look and it'll go with anything that I wear. It doesn't matter. Like, and that's generally like my more 
simple looks. I'm just going to buff it. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even care. Like, it could not completely match at all. And I just feel like, whatever. I like it. That's all that matters. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with this beautiful burnt orange in Jasper. We're going to build that outer corner. Add some more dimension. There we go. I'm taking it, like, not, like, super far up in the crease, but just, just the teensiest bit. To mix them all together. So it probably looks like more. It looks like more in my, in my mirror. Oh, well, it's not on purpose. Oh. It's so pretty though. So what may new makeup are you guys looking forward to? Because there's so much out there and so much that comes out like on a weekly basis like ColourPop. Oh god. So there's so much I want to try from ColourPop. Honest to god, there is. However, they literally come out like weekly with new stuff. So it's kind of like really hard to keep up. But I want like their Sweet Talk palette's been out for a while, but I really want that. And then I want their California Lovin' just because I am a California girl at heart and and by that I mean I was born and raised in California. So California girl. So I need to have that to represent, and then they have a few, there's a few other ones, I can't think of what they are. Oh, their new yellow one, uh-huh honey, oh, yes, I'm so totally into yellow right now. It's, it's sick, it's so sick, but it's true. Okay, so then I'm going to take this, which is Azalea, and that's going to be my lid shade. Oh, it's so good. Um, and I'm just gonna put that on with my finger. So, there's so much. And, like, other companies, too. Like, there's so much that goes on in this. It's literally, like, the makeup industry is saturated, like, with makeup and stuff like that. Which, obviously, but, oh, it, it makes it so hard for a girl to keep up when she wants it all. This shade might have been a better bet with like a glitter glue or something like that, but still so stunning. And there's no fallout, like not, like there's some in my lashes, but like not down on my cheeks or anything. So I'm actually gonna take this yellow and I'm gonna line my Waterline. That's pretty dang pigmented, guys. Not that I'm like, oop, contact didn't like that. Not that I'm super surprised or anything, but because I, like I said, I've heard amazing things like that, but wow. I was not so I was not expecting that. I'm gonna take a liner brush and I'm gonna hit Jasper and I'm gonna run that along the outer third. So like because it's not being diffused right now, it is super pigmented. I'm gonna take this and kind of diffuse it a little bit, hopefully. And I'm gonna take this small blending brush and dip back into Morning, which is that first shade that we went into our crease with. And I'm gonna actually blend it out a little bit more. Gonna take a gate, a gate, this shade right here. 
I'm gonna oops, pop that into my inner corner. And bring it up into like the inner, it's not even like a quarter, the inner 16th of my eye, I guess. As well, like blend it into um, Azalea. I'm gonna pop up, pop on the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Gloss and Strawberry Lemonade, I believe. Yeah. I'm gonna actually set my face with the MAC Fix Plus. And I have like literally drenched my face. And then I do this. I know everybody has their handy dandy fans these days, but eh, my hands work. And then I like to press in with my sponge to soak up like any excess. And I curl my lashes with these. And they're they're by the Sephora brand and they're technically supposed to like um, mesh your falsies with your real lashes. I believe that's the point of these. But I've just seen Tati use it as a regular eyelash curler and I was like, dude, where have you been all my life? I'm sick of pinching the crap out of my freaking eyelids. And then I'm gonna go in with the Benefit. So I haven't really actually used anything from Benefit. I don't think, I don't think I have anything by them. So maybe this will make me be like, yeah. Okay, so it's the like rubberized um, wand, which I don't hate, they're not my favorite, but I don't hate them. Okay, let's try one more coat. And I haven't dipped back into the the two at all. This, everything that I'm still using is from when I originally pulled it out. So, what do we think? Hang on, let me hold my mirror at a better angle. Really nice. Kinda like it. Let's see what all of the fuss is about with the Anastasia Brow Wiz and the gel. This is in dark brown. I know my hair looks black, but honest to God, my hair isn't actually black, guys. Tiny. It's a little itty bitty. Itty bitty bitty bitty. And a spoolie. I love sp when brow pencils have spoolies. It's very nice. And just put that up the teensiest amount. And we'll fill in the sparse areas. Just showing up. I need to use a little bit more pressure, but because I didn't know the consistency, I didn't want to start out with using lots of pressure and then like it be too dark or it just like because some of the more waxier pencils that I've used, like you put too much in it or you press it just a little too much and it's like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Like, bold brows for days. And I'm like, over here like, I don't like to do anything to my brows, which I really don't. Like normally, under like norm, like everyday normal circumstances, like I know there's people who are like, I don't feel complete unless my brows are done. I'm like, I don't feel complete unless like my dark circles are hidden. Ultimately, like that's, my thing is I rather have my I rather have my dark circles concealed than like my eyebrows done. You know, but that's just me. 
And it's not against anybody who can't live without having their eyebrows done. That's just how I look at things. Because it's like, my dark circles are hereditary and they're, they're super, they're bad. Like, they're super noticeable. And I'm more insecure about that than anything else. So, where'd, oh, 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 I lost it already. It's right here. I'm gonna try the brow gel. I'm super excited about this. I think this is like what I'm most excited about was the brow gel versus the actual pencil. As sad as that may be. Just cause like, I'd rather use like a tinted brow gel than a pencil. Like if I could get the desired effect later on, I'll have to test it out, but if I get the desired effect where it looks like it's filled in my sp sparser areas versus um, without having to use a pencil, then got a little, got a little glup, gulp right there. How do we look, guys? All right. So, how do we like it? I'm super stoked about it. I'm really excited about all the other products that I haven't tried yet. Not that there's very many, but you know, this one and this one and the rest of these. I'm excited to see how they hold up. I'm hoping like this yellow actually stays, like it lasts a couple of hours at least, not just, you know, as soon as I turn the camera off, it's done. So I'm really excited about this look. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified of every time I upload. All my social media accounts will be linked below to where you can follow me to check out more of my content. Instagram is my go-to. But I will see you guys in my next one.